Saturday, 3 p.m. Chelsea take on Burnley at Stamford Bridge. We are going to preview the game, and here to help me do so is channel fan favourite Josh Aveste and Chelsea YouTube royalty. Oh. George Benson, how's I'll it going, you, mate? I actually quite like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. He deserves that. We we'll get that on a plaque yeah, for next yeah, time. As yeah, yeah. as things, boys, good. Very good, mate. Very good. Thank you for having me yeah. on. That's good. How, so you've been over for about a week or so. About a week. Yeah. I'm jet lagged a bit like you, but not because I've knocked anyone out. Yeah. More so, just still <laughs> Yet, tired. Still time at the game if he has a few beers. <laughs> Um, I think we'll stay on the red wine, won't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. We're going we're going, posh we are going to go somewhere very posh. That's what we've just established. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Well, I'm going to try and get to the game. As I say, I'm still a little bit jet lagged, man. You're going, but mate, you're going. It's a, it's a guaranteed three points, isn't it? It's got to be. It's got to be. If you don't, it, how can we sit here? Was it, this is nice because we've got smiles mm. on our faces because what you just said has to just ring true, doesn't it? Like, you've got to beat Burnley. Do you know yeah, what, yeah. though? Burnley are coming off the back of a win. A win against the team that we weren't able to get a win against a couple of weeks ago in Brentford. Mm. Um, but obviously, do you know what? I'm, I don't know whether this is just blue tinted glasses or what, but they're not going to have their main man, the main goal threat for them. That trophy Fana, he can't play, no? What a player. No, no. he can't play. He's not no. allowed to be. He's not allowed I wouldn't to be, be surprised but... if Chelsea had some weird little clause in his contract where they're like, yeah, but we really want to see if he's any good. <laughs> mm. yeah, come to Stamford Bridge, mate. Have it, a little kick about. It actually would be quite a good thing if he did score against us in a weird way. If he was allowed to play and he to scored To prove some us, kind of point that yeah. we should have just kept the striker at the club all, yeah. all year long. It, he it uh, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't have gone amiss, really, would he, this season? Like, you look at... He looks tidy. I think, I think when I look at Nicholas Jackson, it's like... I know he'll play through the middle, but I don't necessarily think for 90 minutes you stick him through the middle and you keep him there. Like I think he looks good when he's swapping over, especially when he's got Cole Palmer there. Whereas that trophy Fana, he, he sort of looks like an out and out nine, doesn't yeah. he? That goal, that goal he scored against West Ham. Yeah, beautiful. absolutely mm. ridiculous. And yeah. he scored two against Fulham, didn't he? He's, a, he's, a, he's played really well. I think it's like six games he's played and he's got like four goals, one assist. Yeah, they it's just love him bad. because they've just struggled with that all year. And yeah. then he comes in, they don't really expect very much. Because if you have one loan at the start of the season mm. and that don't go necessarily to plan, you're not looking at him thinking, oh, he's going to save us. But like, he's probably not going to save them, but he's definitely given them something to celebrate this season. Yeah. I still think yeah. he'll go down, but... Well, yeah. that's, that's an interesting point because we speak a, bit, a little bit about Burnley. They're going to be massively, massively infused by... Infused, is that a word? We'll go with it. Walking we'll, dictionary, mate. We'll go with it. We'll go with it. They're going to be happy, basically, <laughs> about the fact that everyone's getting points deductions left, right and centre. Only a matter of time before we pick up ours, probably. Um, Six-pointer then, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is a huge game. It's a huge game all of a sudden. Would you reckon on Burnley, like, for me... And um, this will sound so ironic to people that aren't Chelsea fans because after we spent the money we did, normally I would say we're front runners for this prize. But for me, they've been disappointment of the season, mate. I thought Burnley, when they came up, they were giving me Swansea vibes. I yeah. was thinking these lot are going to come up and play a bit of football and finish mid-table. They've been pretty shocking, really, haven't they? Yeah. I think I had them in 13th. Do you remember where you put them? I had them in 11th. I definitely didn't. I think I had them about 11th. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm mad, shot it? completely <laughs> wrong now, but it was definitely... They definitely didn't go down, I don't think. No, mm. but 11 for going down is very different, isn't it? <laughs> like, yeah. That's very high. But, but yeah. we remember, thought they were going to be so good. I remember thinking the top nine this season was going to be like nailed on. Mm. And yeah. then it was everyone else was kind of just like, uh, well, Palace always come about 11th. Yeah. So I probably put Palace 11th, to be fair. Yeah. Chelsea always, always finish about 11th. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, do you know what I have? Uh, Palace as my uh, relegation dark horses. That one doesn't look as bad, right? Even though they won't go down. The worst one I had. Have you seen the clip that, like... This is what I hate about YouTube shorts, right? When you put out an Instagram clip or whatever, it will if it's going to sort of go a bit viral, it will pretty much do it straight away. Same with TikTok, pretty much do it straight away. YouTube, what they like to do is they like to wait a couple of months <laughs> until you look like an absolute knobhead for saying what you've said, and then they let them go. Pings so the clip, of, later. Yeah, so the clip of mine, which is six months ago, that's just going at the minute on YouTube, I'm getting comments on it every day, is me saying, it's before a ball was kicked, by the way, and before uh, Lopetegui had even left, I think he had maybe just left, they hadn't appointed... Um, What's his name? O'Neill. Uh, Gary O'Neill. I was about to say Gary Monk. Uh, they hadn't appointed him and I was saying, look, Wolves are relegation dark horses here. And then they just I thought that at the start of the season too. Yeah. I think I might put them down. 
I, I had yeah. them in 18th as well. Yeah, I think yeah. I did 18th or And 17th. people say, well, Chelsea fans but, think alike. No, eh? but before the season, they were a complete car crash. They'd got rid of some of their best players. Like Ruben Neves went to Saudi, didn't he? Yeah. Mm. And and they got rid of so many of their squads. So I think they were in... They were and in he looked shit. Crisis that, boy they, that boy they had the obligation to sign, Cunha. Yeah. He's actually been all right this He's season. He's done well with like, Last half, season, he yeah. looked shit. So, mm. yeah. Double, but double Burnley, 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 a bit of a surprise package to be... In the position they're in this season, yes and no though, like, right? Because like you go, you look at the manager company and you think, yeah, he's a progressive young manager. He's going to be doing some good stuff. The way they played last season, by the way, was absolutely brilliant. Like, yeah, but that's, the it's the championship, isn't it? Like yeah. that that step up. I mean, Luton have done well, but they mm. kind of they've done exactly what I thought they were going to do, which is like they're not going to be gone because it's Luton and there's going to be a narrative mm. behind it. The flipping Premier League were doing production pieces about them going up, mm. so they've kind of just hovered there. And then you've got like your Forests who, well, they, they bought flipping 30 midfielders, didn't they? Mm. So they were never going to be a proper team. But I think Burnley, I think it's, there's such a gap now between the Championship and the Prem that we'll probably see the same thing next season. No matter who comes up from the Championship, reckon, really? I think they'll all go down. Yeah, All of them. I've got a funny stat for you, by the way, on Luton. You think uh, consecutive goal scorers, like teams that have scored in the most amount of games so far this season, you think Man City, you know, Arsenal will be up there. Luton have scored in the last 17 games in a row. No way. Yeah. Which is more than Man City. City of City of 14. That's a big dog stat. That. Yeah. that is a decent I stat. I really enjoyed that. Big time. I, I rate that from Luton. Yeah. I, I rate that from Luton too. Yeah. I no, really no, give Josh credit for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope they stay up because we've got scored in the last 11 games. You could have made that up and I would have just been like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. By the, the way, beauty of the podcast, we make it all up. Do you know what though? Like I actually said, going back to pre-season predictions, I said Luton to stay up on the final day. I think that could happen. Yeah. That could happen, couldn't it? Like, Forrest are in real trouble. But now. we're all agreeing that Burnley don't stay up. Burnley are fucked. I think, yeah, they, they, I think they were gone a while ago. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think their downfall, because <clears throat> it was around that point of the season. Do you remember? <laughs> it's mad how quickly things changed this season, how our perceptions changed on Chelsea this season. But there was the, there was the start of the season when I was going, it's just a low block. We just don't know how to break down a low block. That's it. And then you started seeing teams beat us with different styles in different ways. And you're yeah. like, oh, okay, it's not just a low block. But I remember when we went and played Burnley, I thought, well, you fucked yourself because you didn't play a low block. Because they didn't. They came to play some football against us. They came to attack. Sort of been their undoing so far this season. If you're a Burnley fan, what do you want to see? Do you want to see a resolute performance? Or do you think go and try and attack Chelsea? I think they just go to Stamford Bridge and low block it. Yeah. I really do. I think that is the most... Because we're actually playing quite well now. Mm. Like we're, we're getting forward. We're scoring more goals. Players are coming into form. Sterling, I think, was brilliant against Burnley. He can't play. Brilliant. Burnley. Brilliant. <laughs> I'm really we'll go, we'll go into that. But like... I think they've just got to do what most teams that have got a result at the bridge have come and they've not tried to play. Mm. I think when, when they're at home, maybe we can be outdone like Brentford, for example. I think we should have lost that game. Mm. But I think I think Burnley will come and just sit back. I think teams that come to Stamford Bridge and do try to play a bit are likely going to have to have real, real quality there if they're going to come away with saying, like you yeah. look at obviously Arsenal doing it and Man City doing it, both coming away of a point there. But then when you look at teams who are like, say for example, right, the three two win against Leeds, right? Leeds were the better team. I'm not having anyone yeah. say that Leeds weren't the better no, team we in that match. They, they played better football. Like, so I think that unless you've got that real quality there, you can come and play a bit of football, but we should have too much for you. And I think that's what will happen. I don't think Burnley will come and play a low block. Do you not rate it, though, that they are trying to play football? Like, you know, when you come up from the championship, do you not, like, want your team to actually, like, have a bit of but this is a some debate, of your style? It? Like, if, if, you're, if we asked a Burnley fan right now, would you do another year in the, in the Prem, but mm. you've played awful all mm. year, which they kind of have anyway. Yeah. So it's not work, but they're mm. guaranteed to go down almost at this point. Mm. Like, I'm pretty sure... What do you want though? Like, do you want do to go want... down and then like have a crack at it again and actually see your team win every week, or do you want to just? I think sweat I think those out, clubs. Really? I think those clubs that are sort of like in between clubs. I think yeah. they actually do want to go down to the championship because then they go and they win. They have that sort of glory yeah. season. Like they won a trophy. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's weird, if I'm a match going really fan, yeah. And I know that the ceiling is what? What's the best they've ever done? They got Europa League one year, didn't they, or something? Uh, and that's the, not even their ceiling now. So then I'm picking between going to games, having a beer and losing, going to games, having a beer and winning. I pre pick having a beer and winning. So I think I'd I go down. Too. Yeah. I mean, I, we say that 
we might actually have that soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, I was just gonna ask him, like, would you do that for Chelsea? Oh, <laughs> and he'd done. go, probably not. Probably. Um, <laughs> let's move on to Chelsea then. Yeah. Let's talk first about the little injury crisis. Oh, I say little injury crisis. The injury crisis have had for the last three years. Josh, can you read us out the list of? unavailabilities it's got a bit longer since we you know about an hour before we sat down here it's got even longer than i thought so mm. trevor is now on the list impartial team training I've, apparently so that could mean that he's fit enough mm. to play i don't, he won't I don't know, know Willie, if that's the case impartial ch- team training What's well that go through the list mean? and we'll see if we've it, even got anyone it, else who could it, play well exactly carney is now injured oh, for, again carney's injured again i didn't even read that one there you go Carney's yeah. not even and he was by the way he would have been in my starting 11 for this game he'd have been in my mm. starting 11 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, then you got Sanchez that's a that's a gutting one I bet you, you you're really upset about that aren't you mate I'm not to be <laughs> no oh we were having this discussion beforehand and I will stick to what I said I wish him all the best yeah I hope he's alright I hope the family's alright yeah. but keep him on the bench yeah, at least we we hate him. So and, I'm chop, quite, and chop a leg off. No. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite happy to say that I don't want him anywhere near the team. I just from don't. I don't I, I've never rated him. No. I really haven't. Yeah. Even when he was at Brighton, I, I didn't understand the signing, especially at 25 million. They're yeah. laughing at us at this mm. point. Did we say he was a third choice goalkeeper at Brighton? I think we all said that in our yeah. r- respective yeah. videos. Mm. I think we all just said he was that bad. You couldn't even. Yeah, get uh, uh, my only thing with Sanchez at the minute is like I got nothing against him, but Petrovic is the man. Like I yeah, love he's, Petrovic. He's, he's a boss, isn't he? And 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 that's what I'm thinking. Like you know. When we look at this whole oh in the league cup maybe or in the FA Cup you can't do that you can't start him there because what if we what if we get to the final then what are you going to do keep him in there and go oh you was in the run on the way there no you start your best 11 yeah. and anyone who puts Sanchez ahead of Petrovic in the best 11 just doesn't watch football well how do you feel then boys about Bento coming in have you heard about this guy I never heard about him until he played against England <laughs> he played now, against England apparently we want to buy him because he kept a clean sheet at yeah, Wembley yeah, yeah. Yeah. it sounds familiar though we've done this so many times haven't we? we've either played someone and they looked really really good and then we just got no well, well I see it yeah, yeah. Game, yeah. game of see the it. bridge I'm like yeah, yeah he's, he's a proper ball at this Salah game. Mm. yeah yeah come yeah. on there's been some good yeah. there's been some good ones there has been the Bruin played ones. against us for Genk didn't they there you go there you go so honestly like I, I quite like the look of Bento you know but I wouldn't necessarily put him in above Petrovic right now but I'm I reckon pretty, we're going to go pretty for... happy with what we've got, man, especially when we're looking at FFP and stuff like that. We're going to sell Sanchez. Certainly not a priority to buy a goalie. Mm-hmm. I, feel, I feel Sanchez is gone in the summer. I I'm think gonna, so. Okay, mate, I'm gonna who's how much who's number two then? Like, what, what's what's the think, fee? I think we're basically taking a bath on it. It'll probably go 15, 20 million. We signed it for 25, I think. Yeah. Sanchez? Yeah. You think we get 15 million for that's Sanchez? So. That's the thing about a lot of the players we bought. Yeah. How can we even say he's worth 15 million? No. Nah. He's not. He's, n- he's a decent goalie, isn't he? You know... He could go. For, like, I know I'm always bigging up the he's transfer fees. He's worth a Saudi ten million. He's, he's, worth, he's a worth a Saudi, Saudi ten. Fifteen. That'd be tasty. Do you think he's Come a Saudi fifteen? Come on, Joey. You got to learn how to negotiate, mate. Yeah, Come right. on. <laughs> Twelve point five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Joey's just going now. Call it five. Saudi ten. <laughs> Who else is on that injury list? Oh God, I'm pulling it up now. So we got the usual Levi still injured. Yeah. Like he's not anywhere near it. Wesley obviously still injured. Reese James is probably still a month away. Still injured. Lavia and Kunku. Uh, and then Leslie, a good trick crew. Well, well. Kunku, You've missed um, one. Pochettino said four weeks ago, didn't he, that he thought Nkunku could be back in four weeks. Yeah. So that's clearly... Yeah, uh, but they also said policy. that first time round. I remember yeah. there was an international break around that time, wasn't there? And I think Liverpool was the first game after. Yeah. No, I think he did play that. He scored in that. But what they say, what their key thing is they're saying, they're briefing out at the moment, and a couple of journalists have said this, is like basically what they're doing is they're, they're fit to be involved in training. And then Pochettino gets his hand around them. He's running them into the ground to make sure that they're match fit, which is kind of like pros and cons. I'm kind of annoyed at him, but then also I kind of get it because yeah. I want my players to be match fit if they're going to be in the Premier League. And then basically by getting to match fitness, they're then breaking down. So it's sort of like, it's a bit of a double-edged sword at the moment because you want players to be physically fit, ready to go, running all over the pitch because Pochettino needs that in his system as well, by the way. Mm. And um, what what seems to be happening is we're trying to get them to that level when they're just breaking down. But I actually think Lavia, let's talk about Lavia for a second. I actually think he was a level before that. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, It seems like he was coming back from his injury, but then he's got a, a knock I think again. technically it feels like his is a bit more like, to use a basic term, just unlucky. Mm. Yeah. Like I feel like with Nkunku, for example, it's such like a, seems to be such a nuanced injury, even with Carney as well. Yeah. Such nuanced injuries that like, you probably can't train them to match fitness. No. Mm. And it's just like, give him 10, give him five, give him 10, if we can. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And then all of a sudden, like then the training can start to go up a notch. But yeah. like you say, Poch is, is sometimes or too often training them into the ground. Yeah. 
And that's why we've got the issue. Lavi is the gutting one, back. isn't it? Because yeah. when you look at Nkunku's record with injuries and even, even Carney's record with injuries, there was there was a history there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There were, there were, even Nkunku missed a lot of games in that last season he had. Um, whereas Lavi are... I think he put up the most minutes for anyone under the age of 18 in the Premier League last season. Yeah, so yeah. it's, uh, You've been it's a tricky one. Squawker, aren't you, Joey? Yeah. <laughs> I saw yeah, that yeah. too. Oh, yes. Um, ben Chua as well. He's injured for this one, though. No? no, Ben Chua should be fit. I, I got told he had a knock or heard he's he had not, a knock. He's not on the Chelsea list no. and he was involved for England. So, uh, Well, we're, we're getting to starting lineups because. Um, there's a talking point there around Ben Chilwell. You know, I, I, at the moment, I'm favouring Kukurera in that position. I don't think position, it is a talking point, to be honest with you. Really? Mm. No, I don't, I don't think it is. You're in Kukurera's favour? I, I am now. I'm Just like you, I've done a complete 180 on Kukurera. I think I'd put him now in my as my number one left back. I could say I'm about 140. I think, I'm, <laughs> I think any player who scores, it kind of gives them that bit of yeah. leeway, I guess. Cause I, I, can I ask a question, right? Is it that... <laughs> Is it that Kukure has been amazing or is it that Ben Chilwell has not been very good? I think Chilwell's had by far the worst season I've ever seen of him in yeah. the Premier League. Not just at Chelsea either. Obviously at Leicester he played well enough to get a move to Chelsea for big money. Mm. But like, he's, even for England, he was the worst player. Mm. Absolutely cross, the worst that player. That cross he did was well, so, so bad. Well, that's the thing that you yeah. always give. Like when Whenever we were talking, and ironic because in the, in, in the final at the Euros, obviously... He scored the goal, but whenever we were having the debate in terms of national selection between Luke Shaw and Ben Chilwell, the thing for me was always like, yeah, Shaw is resolute at the back and he's good and whatnot, but Chilwell offers you that bit of attacking threat, you know? And since we've come back, like, or he's come back from injury, even the attacking threat is just the, 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 the delivery. Out, like, the finishing, like, you rely on him for a good, for a, he was probably one of the best, I'd say he had the best shot on him mm. at Chelsea about 12 months ago. Start of the season, ago. mate. He, he scored yeah. the disallowed goal on the yeah. opening day against Liverpool, didn't he? But, so true. Yeah. I, do you know what? I, I still, I guess we're all saying Petrovic in goal then. Mm. How yeah. do you want to do it? You want to go along the back line from left back? Yeah, let's. Should we agree on a team? That's going to be the easiest way because okay. uh, I was going to do George's team because he's you know the first one back in here. You know, yeah, big day. But let's do our joint. One. I think I think we could all agree on it. I reckon. Okay, fine. Let's, we usually let's, do. Let's agree come now. to an agreement on a team then because that saves me making I'll another video out, tomorrow. I think Kukurella plays. Kukurella, right? Yeah. Let's go along the back line. So Petrovic in goal, obviously. Yeah. Um, back line. Should we start off with right back? It's the main man. Legends, Milo Gustav. Milo Gustav. What a boy! He's what? actually quickly becoming my favourite Chelsea player. I think this I agree. season. Yeah. He's also our best left. Just back. while, just while we're on the uh, <laughs> yeah. on the, yeah, he's our best left back. He's probably our best right winger. Just well, while we're on the yeah. topic of Milo Gusto, what do you think we do with Reese? Either uh, cover for Enzo as a six, mm. potentially alongside Caicedo. Or right centre back. What do you prefer out of them two? Because for I, me, I it's always the, right the midfield. I, I think, think the midfield. I, like a Trent, like what Trent's doing at Liverpool, kind of thing. I think he does a better job. I think even I think deeper, he does though, a better I, job I than Trent. I don't think he's as attacking. As no, what Trent would be in a midfield three. I'd want Reese to be the sort of holding midfielder. But if you can't rely on Fafana to be fit, and De Sassi is either one game away from a disaster or he's he's brilliant, mm. surely he's right centre back for now. Mm. if we got a pending transfer ban and you can't Did buy another centre-half, Silver's gone. Like, Fafana's injured all the flipping time and I wouldn't be surprised if some of these players who come back from injury get injured again mm. straight away because I think we've just bought a lot of injury-prone so players. True. Does it not make you think that there's a bit of, like, waste of talent there if he goes at right centre-back? Like, you look at his creativity, you look like... Re that's for now, though. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I also like, do worry about his defensive side, though. Like, I don't think Reese's best ability is his defensive ability. No, I agreed. Think, I think Going his best ability sure. is sort of like that, those sort of short, sharp burst runs, the crossing, the attacking movement, the strength. Yeah. I don't like... I'll tell you what, I'm I'm sorry sorry to call up, him out. I could pull up a call... list of who's for who, like world star footballers I'm that gonna have call all him said Reese's. Uh, and, uh, and this is the only time that I will ever call out Reese James, but I will say balls over the top, crosses coming in, far post headers, which mm. you want your right centre back to be all over. Mm. I actually think is Reese's probably his biggest weakness mm. I would say yeah. so that's why I, I think if you, you look at his best ability is his passing and I think his general sort of like the way he calms down you know what they've been saying about us at the moment is we can't just calm down a game 
Yeah. I want Reese James to be in that middle just to go, just slow things down. And that's Relax. why I see him as, as yeah. potentially one of the ones in that pivot, maybe in that sixth role even, where I think, right, yeah, yeah. you could you could do something there. But yeah. I think we're all in agreement at the time being, not only would it be unjust on performances, but I don't think it's sending a very good message for Reese to come straight back in and it's like, right, Melo Gusto, Gusto you've can't literally... be dropped, I think. Yeah. No. There's, a, like, no, no there's a very easy way to solve this problem. Like Reese is at right back and Gusto's at left back. Yeah. I mean, that's the simplest way of solving this issue. And if you think about, you know, another thing I was going to ask George is his favourite, like his uh, best 11 right now, if everyone was fit, you know, that's a very mm. interesting topic to go through because I honestly do think our best 11 right now is Gusto at left back. I'd say so. Mm. I'm yeah. not. I'm still. That's what I mean. I'm not 180 on Cucurella. I'm 140. Yeah. If that's mm. even a I thing. Like if you I can like it. I like Cucurella. Yeah, yeah. You get 100 percent to say 140. I like a lot of the players. You know, like the, even this season when we've been pretty shit on the whole. Mm. Like I don't really dislike many. I mm. dislike Sanchez. Mm. We should put that clip in from the start. I think. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think we've already kind Josh, of. Josh, do you, that do you dislike anyone? You've not really been too <laughs> no, vocal. No, do you know what? I don't actually dislike anyone. Like, I, yeah. you know, especially our wingers. I always think are really, really good. Yeah. I've rated them for a long time. Yeah. I, d I went for a stage where I didn't like <laughs> Madweki. Really? Just did, I just Why, thought the party. He, no, I thought I just felt like he. I didn't feel like he ever had control of the ball. Mm. Like even when he was doing stuff, like the goal, the goal he scored against Leicester is fabulous. But like at no point did I ever think he's doing that. Mm. <laughs> like it, it's, it was that I was like, ah, this is alright. Yeah, but now. you're pleasantly surprised. Is that, I'm, that I'm, not a good thing? Yeah, like I'm <laughs> delighted he scored a goal, and I want mm. him to be good. I don't want yeah. any of the players to be bad. No, I like, don't. I, I want Sanchez to die through the air and catch it. I don't mm. want to see him doing these floppy things to vindicate why I think Petrovic is a better mm. goalie because I can be like, well, there you go. I told you. Yeah. I, don't want, I don't want that. Yeah. I've not that. disliked anyone. Like, in you quite, have. I didn't dislike you, Mudrick. You dislike I Mudrick. didn't dislike you did. him. Just be I honest. just thought he was shit. But now I'm like, <laughs> now I'm like, do you know what? He's you right. Proper the last that, one I disliked. You proper fucked that, Joe. Yeah. Just have a moment you where know. you sort of go out there and just say you properly fucked that, that shout. Listen, you he's, really he's not in the running for a fucking Ballon d'Or, is he? He's, he's <laughs> Maybe he should be after some of those goals. He's doing very well now. Come on. Yeah. The last one I actually properly disliked Disliked was Jorginho. Oh, fuck I didn't like it. Didn't yeah. in. This is a bit slow. Yeah. And it was, it was yeah. too slow. He was mm. too slow. Mm. He rated himself quite highly as well, Jorginho. We all do. <laughs> we all do. <laughs> um, right. You okay. So Sterling, centre back pair. You, no. let, come on. Let's just, but let's not uh, rush over Sterling. I hate dislike the way he's him. playing. <laughs> I was I was going to save it until we got further forward. Yeah. Yeah. But you do hate him. But at the moment, I don't I hate him. I hate the way he's playing. The way he's playing. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. It took the words out my mouth. What did you say? I hate the way he's playing. Yeah. Uh, okay. But you yeah. don't hate him. I don't hate him as a person. No. I'd be very happy when he leaves. I yeah. might do a little celebration. We yeah. should do a little video celebrating when he I'll goes to I'll come back for that. Yeah. I think. Yeah. 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 Or we can meet halfway. We can yeah. go yeah. to Saudi Arabia. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Yeah. 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 Let's have the welcome party. <laughs> Turkey, get on the phone. Um, centre back pair him. This is hard. Mm. This, this is, is really tough. We haven't got any centre backs. We well, you bring, you bring Silver back in, surely. Like, yeah. I think, one, I think there's you... part of part of you that looks at things and goes, hold on, the team's been starting to slowly but surely progress without him. And I actually think that's true. But at the same time, let's not have sort of a couple of recent bad performances skew our vision too much. For me, that centre-back pairing here would be the Sassy and Silva, no? I, I'm going to stick with having... Uh, is Baddy Shield fit or is he out? Baddy Shield is fit. So I, I'm going to say... Is, like is he match fit? Probably not. <laughs> well, that's the thing. But then he's silver. <laughs> you can't you can't risk putting someone in who's not match fit because if we do go one nil down, mm. there's still the potential for a disaster class Chelsea performance, mm. even against Burnley. So the Sassy's been woeful since since I said he was brilliant against Man City. What why is it that player? You, always this? you know what though? You, always, yeah, you know yeah. what? But that was good that, that Man City yeah. performance, he was him. good. He was. he was very good. Yeah. But when I think of one of the better defensive performances this season it was the 3-1 in the cup against Villa and I'm sure that was the sassy buddy of shield that day wasn't it yeah it that was. was the pairing it was, yeah. I'd go with that yeah and it's not like I'm anti-silver now because obviously he's been so great for us mm. but you can't deny that we've got better since we have he's and it's out. the pace that worries me and do you know what Burnley are quite pacey up top. yeah they scored they scored you know the first goal in the other game that we played against in this season mm. uh, that was right up there and that was basically pace so I would worry about Thiago Silva and I actually do think I don't know if you guys have noticed this but there is a concerted effort even after the injury basically to not play Silva mm. so I just feel like he's on his way out now yeah, yeah. I think he's 
been a long time coming sort of thing. They've realised that, look, if we're going to transition away from Thiago Silva, it's going to have to happen at some point. I think if we had had a few more centre-backs available, it'd be a smoother transition anyway. But I think you're outvoting me on that one, so we will go with De Sassi and Badia Shield. I, I personally, for me, if it was my choice, I'd go Trev. Even if he was 50-50, I'd play, I'd play Trev. Even 50% fitness? Yeah. Blimey. Because he's in partial t- team training, which in terms of the injury record of Chelsea, yeah. in terms of the list, that usually means they're like they're okay. To you know, he's disrespected, <laughs> yeah. Trev, isn't he? Right? Because he I was in the barber shop the other day, and I was almost having an argument with someone that in the chair next to me. We speak about Chelsea, and they went, "Yeah, I mean Chalaba, he's always been shit." And I went, "He's always. When? I think he's always been good." I said, t- "That's like what I'm saying." A six point five. I, I said, six. "I said when? When? When's he been shit?" I don't think and he's they ever went, let us down. Oh, well, and I went, what are you going to say about the fact he was deflection for the goal against Man City or something? I was like, when have you actually seen, like, even one, let alone back-to-back bad performances? I said, Trev's, Trev's never been amazing. Like, never been amazing. But he's always a solid, like, you're like, yeah, cool, happy with your job today. I don't think he's bad at all. I think if you stuck him in a in a Crystal Palace or something, it'd shine, Trevor yeah. Chalabar. So we'd probably buy him back for sixty mil for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Literally, you can see that. Chelsea happening. logic. Is um, he better than Gwei, for example, at Palace? Is he? Is he better? Is he better? No, I don't no. think he's better than Margot. You know. No, but that's then that's quite. That's, that's, that's a decent benchmark. But then to you say you play every week and Palace defend more. Yeah. So like, there is a, it, it's a weird paradox, really, mm. because if you like you say if you put Trev in that team. He probably would fit in very nicely yeah. next to him. Him and Mark are going to be quality. Yeah. Well, together. when when you think about them, them three around the same time. I mean, you could include Zuma in it as well, but you go Trevor Chalabar, Gay Tamori. I I think that they're given the platform to shine, Gay and Tamori, a lot more so. I wouldn't say Trev's like a million miles off either of them. I don't just, think so. Just needs the minutes. And, that, and that's why he's disrespected. Because yeah. he is actually quite And he's player. versatile. And yeah. he's versatile. Yeah, he can yeah. play defensive midfield, right back. So, yeah. Um, but we'll have, we'll have the Sassy and Badia Shu in there. Are we all agreeing Kukure left back? Yes. Yeah. yeah? Yes. Pivot. We're in a bit of a tricky situation here because... Enzo's still not even back. Caicedo's been in strip cups all week. Has he? Yeah, he's been he's been out on the town. Good yeah, boy. Yeah. Question Nashville. Is, Nashville he, has a few of them. Any money? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, there was a lot of money flashing about in the video that yeah. I saw, and that was on Pornhub. Really? <laughs> Premium accounts, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's why we, we, we didn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> you just cheapskates don't yeah. pay for it. Come on. Uh, no, he, they, they have been, uh, the Ecuadorian players have been in trouble and that includes our boy, Kendry Pies as well. Really? Yeah. What, for going to a strip club? Well, Kendry wasn't in the strip club. He was just in a normal bar, but he is 16 and it was in America. So a little bit dodgy. I don't, have a problem with it. I don't have a problem Let with it. Let your hair no. down, mate. Don't, don't do it every week. No. I think the thing I said about Kendry Pyers on my video is that I see him live on Instagram almost every day, mm. which to me tells me, well, maybe he could be out playing a bit more football. Mm. <laughs> than, you know, just, yeah, you but know, Oza was sat there on Twitch. I used We've to say this yeah, about I used to, to say this about <laughs> Mudrick, though, sending <laughs> tweets off the bench. I was like, mate, just, <laughs> just turn it off. off. <laughs> but, but also, when you were 16, I was picking belly button fluff out of my fucking belly button playing cods. That's what I was doing. Yeah. I so, can't say anything different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bit Dorito in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so let him, let, yeah, <laughs> let him be a strip, let him get involved in the strip club. No, I think I think you get uh, Kaiseido back, but I am worried about Enzo. No, his, his thing is he's not exactly the fittest anyway. Mm. To oh, oh, be he's, honest, he's in fit. Terms of like, he's oh, fit, he's fit, but, like, but he's not he's fit. Got, if he's got jet lag, Gallagher's available, isn't he? Yeah. Right, okay. I'm just having a little think about this myself, <laughs> who, who to be honest. I think I think you just go... Do you know what? There's part of me, but it, it doesn't come from any sort of like tactical standpoint I really want to see Cassidy in there at some point from the well, start of the game. game to do it I'd say mm. if you're gonna I, I back that I could I like actually it. see that in this game too I, I wouldn't play him in the pivot I'd play him in the 10 roll in the 10 in the 10 roll you know with our 10s it's basically then, an 8 then where does our boy Mudrick play on the wing on the left yeah, so, you leave, so you'd, so you'd then leave the Conor Gallagher team. out though would you I would play Conor Gallagher in the pivot I wouldn't play Cassidy in this game right personally. okay should we agree on that then? We go Caicedo, Gallagher, and who are we having in the 10? I put my boy Mudrick in the 10. I thought you were going to put him on the left. Well, no, that was if that was if so, Cassidy was playing. Okay. I'm not playing Cassidy. So I, I, I personally think... would also probably go for Mudrick. I want you to give Cassidy a shout, yeah. and I'd love to see him give him some minutes. Me too. But if I'm thinking our best chance of winning this game, I'm thinking we go Caicedo, Gallagher... 
And I think we go Mudrick in the 10. I'd like to see Mudrick. In. He, he's just so much better there. Mm. Than on the left, he gets isolated. And I think he yeah. feels like there's too much emphasis on him having to do something amazing. Mm. And I think in that 10, he can kind of show his intelligence as a footballer be a, bit a bit more. more free. And, yeah, and be mm. kind of less reliant on doing the two steps before that step that's supposed to be the one that puts the ball in the net. Yeah. So I think when he's asked to do less of that, he can do more. Yeah, he's shown so, he can score yeah. goals as well. That's the key thing yeah. you want from that number 10. You want them to sort of um, step up and score a goal and he mm. can do that. So I like him in the 10 position and I think with the Enzo issue, and it is an issue, he came back at what, like, he, he was playing like 2am the other night, wasn't he? Yeah. So yeah. like, you, you just say he's probably not going to be available. He wasn't training yesterday. So it yeah. tells you everything you need to know, really. So we're going Mudrick in the 10. What about on the right-hand side? Are we Palmer. Yeah. unanimous on Palmer? Yeah. It's got yeah. to be Cole Palmer there. I don't think you move him. No. I think it's the left that's the, hmm, what do we do here? Mm. I'd say Madweki. I, the, just, I would say Madweki, but the only thing is, he has showed so far that he doesn't really like it on the left-hand side, does he? I think you can move Cole Palmer out there quite easy, because then because then Mudrick and Cole Palmer can basically interchange. I, yeah. I don't mind that at all. Well, so Palmer on the left, yeah. Madweki on the right, yeah. and then Jackson obviously through the middle. Yeah, I would. I think that would be the best lineup because... If you go Palmer on the left, um, you've got two players, either, well, not either side of him. You've got Jackson there and Mudrick there, and all of them can interchange. And even Jackson and Mudrick, we go all the way back to like the little link up in pre season against Brighton. That was a banger. That's what we want to see more of. Because yeah. that, that, that actually showed us what they can do. Yeah. Because that's what Jackson, I think, has been so good at recently. It's like the. The holding up mm. the play, which before I thought he was a bit Bambi on ice at the start mm. of the season. I was like, if he's he's snatching at chances, he was missing obviously big ones, which was highly Great. documented. But I feel like now he's kind of quite quickly growing into his body as mm. a Premier League forward. Like he's probably been bullied a couple of times, realised that, you know, it's not little Spanish centre-backs anymore. Mm. And he's got to actually put more of a physical shift in. So I think seeing those four all very quick interchangeable players different areas of the field I think we could win this 5 or 6 nil, mate I've think just seen can. it now mm. I've just now now we talk about it I'm excited about that back it I think Sterling starts though yeah Sterling 100% I does think, I think Sterling definitely can, can starts can we just moment. do a little moment on that though because I think if he has a poor game at Stamford Bridge against Burnley I think it's the stadium is going to absolutely turn on him mm. it's already been a bit like obviously the players are all going to come out and back him and I'll be honest like I've probably been very harsh on him all season long. But the problem is, like, I just feel as though the performances that we're seeing aren't a surprise when the only thing he's got left to win at club level is the Champions League and we're nowhere near that, so we mm. can't do that. What's he got to prove? So in terms of, like, I I'm not saying he's not trying, but, like, sometimes it looks like he isn't. Yeah. Because you expect so much more from a player of that stature, that calibre, with that record. Mate, you hit the nail on the head. I remember watching your video when you said he was walking around like it was his testimonial. Yeah. And it's just like, you were. And also, what happens at a testimonial? You know, someone up the other end of the pitch, you wins a penalty. Oh, yep, my one. That's how he's fucking treating it. <laughs> it's like, I get, yeah. right, I get that he won that penalty, but he didn't have to do much to win it. If anything, he'd fucked the chance up already for, in that game against Leicester. He had mistouched the ball, mishandled the ball on his first touch. Wins the penalty because someone comes through the back of him. It's not like he's actually won it, like a lot of players will do now. But straight away, it's like you've got Cole Palmer on the, on the pitch and you're taking the pin. Why? Why? <laughs> you just don't do it. Why Especially would you... then you go and hit it like that. Mate, honestly, like there's no grounds as to why you would be taking that. That's like all, that's like there being three of us out, two of us are rip-roaring drunk, you're the only sober one and me going, now nah, do you know what, I'll drive the car this time. It's like, no, you've got a sure thing there. Like you just go with that. It's just, mm. mate, all stuff like that. I was going to say the exactly the, the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely want him throwing the punches. <laughs> yeah. uh, what do you think about the briefings, by the way? Because we've had a lot of briefings this week or so or the last couple of weeks about Sterling's camp basically saying they're really happy at Chelsea they're very happy to stay he's got I would be fucking happy on 325 grand a week funny enough he's he's back he's like he's retiring yeah he's slowly retiring and London is where he wants to be yeah so and true. that's how it feels when you watch him play football which is yeah. sound it's not even about being harsh you know like I'm I'm tired of people saying like you've got to back all the players all the time I'm like no I'm sorry it's spade mm. to spade mate he's playing 
shit <laughs> week yeah. in week out back in the day we so, would have called out players if they weren't performing we absolutely. would have said like You're, they're not good enough we don't yeah. want them to stay at the football club so I don't see why yeah. that, the Sterling case is any different from that I just don't know where he goes and like I, I, I don't think Saudi's think take, lovely I don't this time of year it. Saudi's lovely take this it. time of year all, all through the year beautiful <laughs> weather no clouds <laughs> Exactly. And when it does something, magic happens. Yeah. Money drops on the And side. when you have an absolute shocker of a game, don't worry, there's only about 400 people in the stadium. <laughs> 200 of them are staff. So <laughs> you'd be sweet. You'd be sweet. Um, what do we need to do to go out there and assert some dominance on this game? I'm going to give my opinion. Once we score, because we will score, and I think we'll actually do it early on, you know. Once we do that, go for the fucking kill. Because when we yeah. scored against Brentford, right? I think it was Jackson's header. All of a sudden, there was a period there of like 20 minutes in the game. You could have done it. You could have completely deaded off the game there and then. But we didn't. We had our we had our foot on the throat, but we didn't clinch down on it. You know what I mean? And I just think like, at the moment, we are, when we're playing good, I'm not comparing us to Arsenal, but you see the way that when <laughs> Arsenal start, they score one and they'll get three straight away all yeah. of a sudden. We have the ability in our forward line, in our team, to be able to do that. To be able to understand that, okay, we've not got the maturity to keep that resoluteness for a complete 90 minutes of the game. But we can do sank in a 10, 15 minute period that doesn't mean that's going to matter later on because we've already just done too much. Mm. We need to go into that Man United game after a, basically a 5-0, don't we? we need to, that's we need why some I'm saying we're going to win 5-0. You reckon we will? Set up that match to make, to make it mean something because this has been the, that, that game to look forward a bit further. That Chelsea Man United game is kind of the joke battle of the Premier League, where it's like these two have been shit all year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now who's the worst? It's the, that that is the key thing is yeah. to prove who is the worst yeah, yeah. out of us. The because best of the rest. whether they're whether I don't give a shit where they are in the league, they are crap, Man mm. United. Yeah, I, I've not watched them this season at any point. The Liverpool game is an exception, but that was like a football spectacle. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but that was more FA about Cup the too. Doesn't count. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, it, it does. We're in that. Semi-final. It really does. <laughs> we win that. Yeah. But we need to go into that Man United game. With that was the uh, that, that was a down point for me this season. To be honest, that Man United game. Yeah. Like that yeah, was cool. uh, we were we, me and Brian did a live stream for it. I got absolutely smashed because it was just like, this is painful, man. This is bad. Like, that was the point when, like we were saying, it was the battle of the bad teams, really, wasn't it? And I was thinking, right, I've not got much to cling on to here, but at least if I can say I'm better than Man United, also, I'd love to finish above them just for Mason Mount's sake. And yeah. I just really wanted to beat him in that game. So that was like a real, real... Because it was a pathetic performance, really, wasn't it, against Man United? I think that's one of the most disappointing. I think both the Wolves ones yeah. and Man United are the ones that stick out for me. The ones Christmas Eve. Imagine putting a game on Christmas Eve and playing like that. Mm. Flip. Mm. That ruined my Christmas. It actually, I genuinely totally, did. Totally yeah. did. Completely ruined mine. Yeah. 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 I had a ticket to go to that Wolves game as well. Luckily, he didn't go. So, poor old boys yeah. that did go up there, they fucking oh, hell. That was an absolute. Yeah. Hell. And the coaches were shit, weren't they as well? Yeah. So, are we in agreement here? We're saying a five nil job. <sighs> Why not? I'm go- I'm gonna I'm gonna stick my neck out now. I'm gonna go like a five three or a five two. I reckon it's gonna be I reckon chaos. it'll be chaos. I reckon mm. they'll score a few goals. I think five nil. No, five one, five one. Let's five one. Let's let's go five one. Five one? I'll I'll compromise on five We're one. Back Fuck it. it. <laughs> five one. We're back three it. nil down, we win five three. Yeah, that's that. it. Yeah. That's it. We're back it. People, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, I'm sure you guys already are, but if you're not already, George's channel is linked in the description. Head over there, subscribe so you can see all of his content. The same with Josh's. Thank you, boys, once again. And we will see you all in the next one.